Yes. Good morning, everyone. Today we、we'll、start a new book, the Book of Malachi. I divide into three chapters. For this chapter one, first one to five, and、uh, God was saying that He loved Israel unconditionally, but the response of Israel was verse six to eleven. Talks about. Israel despising God. And then the last paragraph talks about Israel profaning the name of God. Book of Malachi, the first chapter, is a very special way to write the book. As if God and man were having a conversation. How did man respond? Something special about Malachi. It's a total a picture. Israel and God having a conversation. Let me share the background of the book of Malachi. Most theologians agree that、uh, the book was written in the fifth century. The time of Nehemiah. Nehemiah used to be a high official in Persia. He was the cupbearer, and he laid down his job and came to Judah to be the head of the province. And for a period of time, he left. Judah went back to Persia, and Nehemiah had restored, rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem, and initiated a great reform. But when he went back to Persia for rest and then returned back to Jerusalem. He realized that everything returned back to the former way, the ungodly way. I would be sad too if I were Malachi coming back to Jerusalem and seeing that. And some people believe that. This book was written when Nehemiah was not there. When he was still in Persia, and that's the background of the book. The book of Malachi emphasizes one word: covenant. And again, again, it emphasizes God's love for man. Never changes. But the Israelites, they rebelled against God, ran away from God again and again. The book of Malachi is special. It was the last prophetic book in the Old Testament. The last of the small prophet. And some people call this book like a seal of the whole Old Testament. And because that, this Malachi is the last book. And once it's sealed, it's put down. No more prophetic voice appeared.
and God was silent for 400 years because God thought that it was useless to continue to speak because the people would not listen. So God was silent for 400 years until John the Baptist came. So you know how important this book is. And Malachi didn't tell us where he came from, who his father was, which tribe did he belong to. That was the usual practice in the Jewish custom when they wrote a book. But we cannot see the origin of this prophet. There was no information. In Malachi, this name it means in Hebrew. Messenger of God. So this book was written by the messenger of God. He may have hidden his own name. He didn't tell everyone his true name. He tried to hide his identity. Okay, now let's go to chapter one, the first one. In Oracle, the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. The word of the Lord to Israel through his messenger. Oracle means revelation. So this book was actually for Israel. And what was God saying here? As we read the first chapter, you will see it repeated. God says, God says. Repeatedly, Malachi emphasized that this is the word of God. So what did God say? I have loved to. In Hebrew, that's a past perfect tense, which means he started to love Israel from the past. And he has completed to now. So from the past until today, God has been loving Israel. But you ask, how have you loved us? If this is a conversation between the father and the son. It's like the father speaks to the son. I have always loved you, and then the son says, "How? When? I don't know." And that's really terrible. But that's the case here. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? The law says yet. I have loved Jacob, but Israel I have hated, and I have turned his mountains into a wasteland and left his inheritance to the desert jackals. That's a literal way to express I've loved Jacob, but Israel I have hated. It means what is more important, uh, what is more. It's not really about hating Israel. Israel was the older brother, but I loved. Jacob more, and that was the background of the culture. The older son should receive double blessing and double love, double inheritance, because the elder son was born first. The first child you have expected for a long time. They have no competitor, so everyone loved. Everyone loves the older child. God says, "I love you more than your brother." 
How can we see that? Because God has turned the older brother's mountains into a wasteland and left his inheritance to the desert jackals, the desert dogs. I give you a land of milk and honey, but your older brother only can have the wasteland, the desert. Uh, that's a literary way of expression again. But God was telling the picture. The younger son. I should love your old, younger brother more, but I. But I've given you more than your older brother. Every time I let you eat the chicken first, I've given you the apples first. Do you see what I've given you? Just compare what you receive to what your older brothers received. I actually love you more um, without reason and reasonably. So actually God is saying, I have loved you unconditionally and reasonably. You are the younger brother. You should have less inheritance than your older brother. But you see, I have given you the land of honey and milk, but I've given him the desert. And Edom may say, verse 4, Though we have been crushed, we will rebuild the ruins. But this is what the Lord Almighty says that they may build, but I will demolish. They will be called the wicked land, and the people always under the wrath of the Lord. You will see it with your own eyes and say, Great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel. Edom has sinned, and so God's wrath has come. Edom. These people, they are the descendants of Esau. And the older brother came to attack Israel, the younger brother. So God judged Edom more severely. At that time, Edom was invaded by the Arabs, and they had to flee to the desert of Israel. And God said, Edom. In such a situation, and they said, even though we've been crushed, we will build the ruins. They didn't want to be defeated, and their attitude was they didn't rely on God; they relied on themselves, and that's the problem of Edom. Just like Esau, relying on themselves and not on God, and rejected God. And not rely on the covenant with God. They thought by themselves they could rebuild the ruins. Sometimes we may have such an attitude like Edom. We need to be careful because we they rely on themselves and not on God. And God says they may build, but I will demolish. They cannot see that they're. Opponent was actually God and not the circumstance. If they could rely on God in the wasteland, the desert, God can turn the desert into a field. He can make a stream in the desert and make a path in the wilderness. So with God, everything can be changed. Even though God gave them the wilderness first. The Edom rejected God and went far away from God and didn't rely on God, so God couldn't really help them. And so God said, "You may build, but I will demolish." And God said, "They will be called the wicked land of people, always under the wrath of God." So God was going to do something、uh, severe to punish them, so they could wake up. And they will rely on God again. Return to God. And verse five, God told Israelites, "You will see it with your own eyes and say, 'Great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel.' When you see that God disciplines Edom, you know that 
God is magnified beyond the borders of Israel because Edom will return. They will magnify the Lord. When they don't say our op opponent is God, we have made a mistake for a long time. When they have learned a lesson, they can magnify God, and that's a picture. God says, "If I would do such a thing, the strong Edom, the stubborn Edom, will return to me," and that's actually hinting that Israel. Have you returned to me? God has also disciplined Israel. They have been exiled, and now Nehemiah came back to rebuild the city. And after a while, you you go astray again. So, how hard is your heart, Israel? Even Edom would return. Verse six to eleven. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty, as you, O priest, who show contempt for my name, but you ask, how have you? We show contempt for your name. God said. Priests should respect the name of God, honor the name of God. But these priests, they despise God. They belittle God, which means you do not respect this job. You are called a servant of God, but you despise your master. Uh, to exaggerate uh, pictures like this. If you go to work, the boss is in front of you, and you're still lazy and not really do your work. And your boss says, "Well, come and work." And then you say, oh, "Hey." So if you have such an attitude, how would a boss treat you? So here, we see that a priest has despised God, and so God used the illustration that、like、the son and the master should honor the father or the master. That's the simplest ethics. But God said, "I am a master. Where is the respect due me? This master is bigger and greater than everyone else on earth. If we would take this land back, the earth back, we don't have any water to drink and air to breathe. We all die." And God says. So where's the respect to me? But then the Lord Almighty says, "It's you, O priests, who show contempt for my name." But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? You place defiled food on my altar, but you ask, how have we defiled you by saying that the Lord's table is contemptible? When you bring blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice crippled or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. So God says first, you give something contemptible to me. What does that mean? God has instructed clearly what the people can offer and what not in the Old Testament, and the priest's duty was to check if the sacrifice was okay, acceptable. But this priest, they despised the Lord. They just let the people offer contemptible sacrifice, just like. A son will offer a candy to you, father, and then 
and he dropped the candy and find that oh that's very dirty and then so the son thinks okay I'm not eating it daddy I give it to you to eat how would you feel that's the same the son thinks he cannot eat that candy so dirty a gift to the father and then he said hey how can you give me this dirty candy and then the son says how is it dirty and then also God said, You by saying that the Lord's table is contemptible, you, def you have defiled me, God says. When you bring, which means you can despise it, it doesn't really matter. Just like a pastor uh, today, and uh, the people want to bring offering from the heart, and then the pastor says, "It's okay. It doesn't matter if you offer or not. It doesn't really matter." So God will be very upset. And verse 8, when you bring blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? So who is blind? The one who offers the animal, not really the blind animals. You cannot really see God. You don't see the whole picture. God is the source of everything. and You despised him. How would you be blessed? You even despise your own father. How could you be blessed? So, also, when you sacrifice crippled or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Blind is still sh okay. Uh, not so good, but even worse, are the crippled or deceased animals. Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? The crippled, the deceased, even your um, governor would not like it. And you're giving it to God. Surely the governor will not take your gift. How dare you bring this to God? So if not despise God, today we may not have offered, uh, we're not offering animals, but we may do something similar. Someone has two sons, the older son has good grades, graduate from PhD, the youngest son doesn't do as well. And then the father says, okay, God, I offer you uh, the younger son. The older son can be a doctor, and then the younger son cannot do as well as school, can only have a regular job, so we offer so the father offers the younger son to God to serve in the church. So what is good? Don't take away. He's a doctor. Do not call him to the Bible college. Don't be a pastor so poor. That may be our prayer. And then what's the difference? Are we giving the best to God? Are we giving the best to ourselves? and give the second best to God. If that's the case, and we actually despise God, we don't regard Him as our Father and Master and Lord and King. First nine, now implore God to be gracious to us. With such offerings from your hands will He accept you, says the Lord Almighty. God is saying that I am Encouraging, encouraging you now, reminding you now. Okay, you've not done well. It's fine. I'll teach you again. Just like the youngest, the the son gives the dirty candy to father. The, the father is patient and says, 
this is not right. What you do? Throw it away to the garbage bin, and then give me another candy, a new one, and tell your daddy, I've thrown away the dirty candy, but I give you this new one. And the daddy says, "Okay, that's right. What you do? I will give you more candies." That's the power of the daddy. He, he can reward the the son with even more candies. So if we do it right, God's blessing can come. If you give a dirty candy to your father, how would he be satisfied? This is so simple. How come the Israelites don't get it? Verse ten. Oh, that one of you would shut the temple doors so that you would not light useless fires on my altar. I'm not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty, and I will accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nations, from the rising to the setting of the sun. If you despise me. I rather you shut the door of the temple and not offer any. Says, Do you think I like any of these things? If the Israelites do not make offering, God says, from the rising to the setting of the sun, my name shall be great. Israelites, better you did not make an offering. God says, "What you offer is not pleasing to me." God said, "Do you think、uh, you owe me something, or I will lack something if you do not make an offering? The whole world belongs to me. If I want to reveal my glory." Even the Gentiles will come to know me and and respect me and worship me and give offering to me. Even the Gentiles, just like the Father is telling the Son, if you don't respect me, that's fine. Don't do anything from now on. But I will tell you, you know, my your Father goes everywhere and he he gains the respect. So I don't like your respect. So that's a reminder for us: do not despise our God. First, twelve to fourteen. The on the surface, seems that it's the same as what comes before, but look carefully; it's a bit different. First, twelve. But you profane it by saying of the Lord's table, it is defiled, and of His food, it is contemptible. And you say, "What a burden!" And you sleep at it contemptuously, says the Lord Almighty. So, from despising to profaning God's, to so what it means is, oh, you look down at your father. But father says, "Oh, you're actually insulting your father. You see that this is another. This is more serious. You don't only despise me, but you actually insult me. So, just like giving a candy, a dirty candy to the father, insult is this. Okay, this is dirty. I don't want it." So the father throws away the candy, and then the and then the younger son would spit on the father's face and says, "I give you the candy, and you don't like it. You don't want this." And then the yeah, the son spits on the father's face. That's insulting the father. It's another level. So you profane it by saying of the Lord's table is defiled, is contemptible. The Lord's table should be set apart, should be holy. 
But you say, what a burden! And you sniff at it contemptuously. Who wants you to give the Ten Commandments? But you say, oh, how troublesome! The brother,、uh, the father tries to remind you of something, and then the children say, "You're so annoying! Just stop it! I don't want to hear from you. You just repeat what you say again and again, and that's actually insulting." The father, so. Gossips, you say, what a burden! Verse fourteen, and you sniff at it contemptuously, says the Lord. It's like, God, you are so annoying, and that's an insult to God. And God says, when you bring injured, crippled, or diseased animals and offer them as sacrifices, shall I accept them from your hand? Says the Lord. Curse is the cheat, who has an acceptable male in his flock and folds. Vows to give it, but then sacrifices a bless a blemished animal to the Lord. And so, it's like you give something really bad to God, as if he were a beggar. God says no. You have cheated. You stolen something back, and then you you rob something, and then you give offering, and you do not offer willingly. You just even give what God hates. Actually, you are despising and insulting God in your heart. You don't think that God deserves it. You think that God is higher. So the Israelites, they were proud and they thought they were greater than God. God is better than you hear from me. Okay, you bless me. I give you a chicken. Just like the Chinese worship the idols. Okay. Let me know the number, the six digits number. Okay, you give me, you let me win the lottery number, then I will give you a chicken or a pig. So God says in the end, curse is to cheat who has an acceptable male. And God said. For I am a great king, and my name is to be feared among the nations. God says, "I am a great king. I do not lack what you offer. My name is to be feared among the nations." Even the stones will praise God. The angels worship God, and who are you, man? Do you dare to insult God? And in the end, the father saying to the son, "Make sure you know who I am. I'm your father. If you do not respect me, then you you won't be able to have a good life. And your father is not a ordinary father. He's the wealthiest person in this whole world. So wake up, son." If you wake up and return, God's mercy will come back, because He's a covenant-keeping God who never changes, and that's what God is telling the Israelites. And let us examine our lives today and really honor God. Honor our heavenly Father because He's worthy. His name is to be praised and feared among the nations. Amen. God says, "I loved you." Have we responded to God's love with our life? Let's first give thanks to God. 
Thank God for His love and grace and mercy, and He has been taking care of us. Let's give thanks to Him for. Lord, today we come to you, and we want to examine our heart lives again. Lord, we need you. Now sit down quietly. Through this chapter. God is speaking to His people again and again. But in this chapter, God is telling His people, the priest, "You have despised my name." They have despised me, my name. Let's humble before the Lord. And not be self-righteous. This chapter is also speaking to us today. In our lives, have we also despised and belittled God today, or even insulted Him? We attend the service. Sunday service. Do we despise God? Are we also the late comers? Uh, when we didn't have the on-site worship earlier, we became. Indifferent to God and to worship, we didn't worship God seriously. Oh, regarding offering, have we despised God, belittled Him? Have we given the tithes to God? Oh, when the economy was bad, we tell we would tell God, Lord, you know how difficult that is. When I'm able, I will offer you, I will offer back to you. In terms of ministry. Have we tried our best? Have we prepared well to serve God every time? Oh, we think, oh, it's great that I've been serving already. That's good enough. Have we offered to the Lord was crippled and lame, and when we are alone on our own, when no one can see us, 
So we are we act like another person would be led of God, despise him, and don't consider his existent act as if he doesn't exist. Let's return to God, or we can still re repent and return to Him and tell the Lord, His Lord, we're really weak. We are filthy. A lot of times, we ignore You, and what we do, I sin against You. I profane Your name. We ask the Lord to forgive us. We have not magnified Him. Yeah, let's repent even deeper and pray for ourselves. Lord, we come to you and want to tell you we love you. And we value even your discipline. And even if you scold us, we know it will because you love us. So give us one more time a humble, soft heart. Take away all our pride. Thinking that we are good. I think we are quite good. Father, give us a alert heart that we know our sins, so we do not sin against you. And not blasphemy against you. Help us to gain every day in our lives, in our ministry, in our offering. Lord, help us to fear you. We want to lift you up again, because only you are God. Only you are king. I want to give you the glory and honor because you are the greatest God. We want to return to your, you with our hearts. We want to lift you up. So let's stand up. And praise the Lord. We want to lift Him up, and we will praise Him and give Him our throne. 
and pray. Give him glory. Give him the glory he deserves. So let's pray. Today in Malachi chapter one, God is reminding us that He wants our heart. He wants our hearts. Because God has treated us with His heart yes. from creation, before creation, He loves us and given us His only begotten Son. What He wants is our heart. And not about what we do, what we offer. Do we have God's heart? God first, and then people, and then the land. Our life priority show us if we truly. Have a heart towards God. Do we put God first? Give the best to God. I give the second best to God. I give God our spare time. 
啊，就會撥腳 first。Come on, our hearts. We know that everyone in six one one knows about we got first next people in the land, the the land, and we're trying our best to do that. And we have that right priority. God will let us be blessed, and grace upon grace, and strength upon strength. So let us all remember. Putting God first, because from the place that the sun rises and to the place is set, the name of the Lord will be lifted up. God's name will be uplifted among us, so that even the Gentiles can see how great is our God. So let's put God. In our first place, his blessing, his peace, and his life will fill us. Then we can be had and not tell. So let's receive blessing in Jesus' name. Bless everyone. God's spirit be with you. And God's spirit will fill you and stir your heart up. Jesus' name, I bless you that you be able to put God first in the people and in the land, so that God will be lifted up among the nations, and your life can be had and not tell. May God's grace and mercy and peace and abundance be with you. When you when you go and you go in and go out, God will protect you. God will take care of you from heaven as a taking care of his, the apple of His eyes. The Lord love you and take. Precious you because you are, have a heart towards God, and God will open the floodgates of heaven and pour down blessings to you, so that there's no place to contain all the blessings, and you can overflow to be blessings to many. And people can envy you because God is gracious to you, and then you can influence others, and the whole world can see and return to you. Lord, bless and keep our brothers and sisters. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, the Lord. The morning's devotion will end here. The Lord bless you.